We're going to do a quick video on ES on the daily time frame 65. We're going to check out a pattern and go all the way down to the five minute time frame so I can show you what's happening while we're waiting for um, things to pan out. We have earnings this week, so it seems that uh, all this time, these three weeks that we've been in kind of that same area, we are uh, looking to resolve this this week. Okay, so. If you're new here, go down to that bottom right-hand corner, hit that option center logo, and subscribe. Appreciate you being here. If we notice, um, on this daily time frame, we're still in a triangulation. We're at the uh, resistance area. We're getting the bearish crossover right now. Same thing with the RSI. You see resistance. We're heading back to the downside. So that kind of... Uh, reiterates what this picture is showing. We're back up at resistance here. We had a trend line that is broken down. Now we're, we're waiting for kind of things to resolve underneath the hood in order for this to get follow through. We're at the 20 day moving average. Had a reaction off of it, which is natural, but um, I think uh, things are just holding up to wait to see what uh, some of the mega cap stocks um, for tech does for earnings. I think we have uh, Microsoft on Tuesday and Amazon on Thursday. So anyway, let's get down into the 65 minute time frame where we can uh, see just a little bit more detail and then we'll go further down just so you could get a look at what I'm looking for because this is messy. This is all messy. This is one big range here for, like I said, three weeks and the NASDAQ even four weeks. So here's our trend line. I adjusted this trend line so it would be a little more benefit of the doubt. Um, I'll highlight it here for you so, so you can see. Um, before I had it, so it was along with this ending diagonal here, and uh, but it didn't reach the very end of each of these points, so I wanted to make sure there's benefit of the doubt and we could watch this trend line here. But mainly highlighted is this expanding triangle. So uh, we broke down from the trend line, we're back testing now, and um, it does appear that we're starting to get uh, some sideways consolidation with this expanding triangle before uh, moving lower. So on this time frame, I can show you that we have a three wave move down here, okay? How can you say this is impulsive? Well, I think this is a leading diagonal. We have three wave move for one, two, three down for a wave three, four, and we completed wave five here. Now, that's where I'm gonna dig in. So this would be a wave one. These five waves, even though they're three waves a piece, piece um, ends a wave one here. Okay, now, so we're getting a sideways wave two in an expanding triangle. I don't know if that's against the rules. I mean, this could be a one, two, one, two, one, two kind of thing going on here, but this is the way I see it. And so this is the way, um, this is if we start resolving uh, below this triangle, then I then uh, clearly everything's complete. So let's let's take all of this off of here and uh, let's kind of dig in a little bit. And I'll just draw some lines for you. We had our completion of wave one, possibly right here. That's what we're talking about now. What are we talking about this in this expanding triangle? So if this is the end of wave one, then we have a three wave move for an A, three wave move down for B, three waves up for C, three waves for D, and this could either go and end here at the top of that uh, resistance zone and that would be your wave E, or this is just a larger one, two, three, where we resolve a bit higher, perhaps tomorrow with Microsoft coming on, um, whatever the reason is, and price wants to go higher and, and, and still stay within, or even have a throw over on that uh, expanding wedge or triangle, then uh, we can we can kind of look for this to resolve around the 4167 or maybe even just a little bit higher. And, and here's why. So let's go just back up a little bit. 
and let's just use our retracement tool. So if this is a five wave move down, three, 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 four wave one, then we wanna see what the retracement would be from the top. And we consider the bottom of wave one. And we already retraced 38.2. But this wave E, if this is a three wave move and it has a little bit further to go, then 4170, this, the 67 area, is the 50% retracement. And you have a little bit more room up to the 74. Uh, where we, This zone is where we would place our trades for um, more puts or add on, I should say, to our puts. And uh, that should be a nice wave two before an impulsive wave three. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. And um, if if the wave has completed, if this is a E and it completed after this A, B, C, D, E is completed here at the 382, then this is an impulsive one. And we're just looking for a wave two before heading lower and breaking down from that expanding pattern. Okay, and um, the last thing I, I want to show you is the VIX and then we'll get off of here, keep it kind of short uh, while we're waiting for things to happen. So let's go over to the VIX on the 65 minute time frame. You see this beautiful wedge going right into the channel bottom. The wedges can always expand. So it can be rejected and if we get a lower low, then we have to expand that wedge a little higher. But we're kind of coiling up here perhaps like a one, two, one, two, one, two, waiting for a move, waiting to see what tech does. And I think this thing is uh, ready to coil up and spring to the upside. And uh, that uh, should be an inverse to the market where the market's gonna head lower. Um, I think this wedge is breaking out. I think things are happening. Well, I think the positive divergence is happening. We're just waiting for the catalyst, whether that be something on the economic data or um, tech itself. All right, that's it. That's all I got to show you. Don't forget to like the video. Thanks for joining us here at Options Center. We will talk to you tomorrow.